On a night where high drama teamed with real controversy and left the Rangers grasping for answers and water bottles, no doubt, and the Penguins grasping game one in three overtimes. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, and Steve Valak had 4-3 the final. The Penguins win 5-58 into the third OT on a goal that started at the point with John Marino's wrist shot and ended with a tip-in from Evgeny Malkin in front of Igor Shesterkin, who was beyond other otherworldly. <laughs> you know, for the folks that were tuned in five hours ago, uh, you would have seen a first period where the Rangers just dominated. And, you know, it's, it's hard to fathom that did Pittsburgh really wake up or did the Rangers struggle with the paralyzed feeling of maybe overachieving and then embracing that and then not being able to turn it over and have a really solid second period. Uh, that's where the game really got wonky. And it looked to me like the Rangers had full control and then lost control completely. And then you end up going three uh, overtime periods later and you're exhausted. You know? yeah. Well, Everybody you, you look at a hockey game, it, it will never look exactly the same for 60 minutes, right? And the, the first period, no question, it belonged to the Rangers, they were physical, they were all over the, the Penguins. And you, we talked about this after the first also, the Penguins, they didn't really make any plays. They mm -hmm. just chipped the puck out, they dumped it in and kind of changed. They didn't really have anything going. And then the second period, for some reason, they were able to get that first pass clear, tape to tape, and they entered the Rangers zone with possession every time, and they were able to to create chances from that because they're very good when they cross the blue line with control with the puck instead of dumping and try to chase it. So that kind of changed the momentum in the game. And then in the third and in overtime, it, it was kind of a 50-50 yeah. game. Chances both ways, outstanding goaltending. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was watching the overtime and I tried to, you know, you, you play for so long, the intensity, there's so many uh, plays that need to be made, so many decisions, there was hardly any mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's rare when you watch a game this long. That's why you don't see these many games that, that to go this far because you, you have mistakes along the way that's going to cost you. But both teams were very focused and uh, played with a lot of control with the puck. Yeah, and you knew if a shot was going to beat Igor Shesterkin, it wasn't going to be clear-sighted. It was going to be a deflection. That's exactly what happened with Evgeny Malkin parked in front. There were so many of these opportunities both ways. I think that uh, there's a little bit of luck and good fortune in goals like this. You've got to get a stick on it. Uh, there was a lot of traffic both ways. You know, we saw pucks guys end up off crossbars and posts and laying in the crease. It just so happened that in the third overtime, Malkin frees himself up alone. He's alone. Uh, nobody's getting his stick and he's able to get the shaft of his stick on it. There's definitely some luck involved there. But it's not like the first time that we saw that over three overtime periods. It was a lot of that. It was throw it to the net. There was a lot of traffic. And in a lot of cases, the players are aiming for the pile on the side of the net and looking for a ricochet. This just so happened to be the first one that actually connected. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, you play in the third overtime. They're yeah. so tired, and, and you kind of have to expect the goal to be, be scored like this, where you just get a stick on it right in front, because to your point, John, that, that both goalies, and especially Igor, played so well, it was going to be hard to beat him clean. <laughs> and uh, when the puck is up top, it doesn't look like a big situation at all, but all you need is that screen or the stick right in front, and... The game is over. And we got Louis Domingue. Yeah, which is another unbelievable part of this otherworldly night. 83 shots on goal from the Pittsburgh Penguins, 143 shot attempts overall, and this is where these 79 saves rank. Second all-time in the Stanley Cup playoffs. This was Igor Shesterkin's first foray into the postseason, and he finishes just shy of Jonas Corposalo from the bubble two years ago. Igor Shesterkin made 79 saves tonight, but ultimately it goes down as a four three loss in triple overtime to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And, and I mean, what else can you say about Igor Shesterkin that that number alone doesn't tell you 79? It's just the chance to win, right? I mean, like that's it was his mindset was I'm going to keep this as close as I can for as long as I can. And I'm going to let the guys try and decide it because he knows he can't get out there and help them score. But he can prevent Pittsburgh over and over again to just lengthen the game a little bit longer and give your team the opportunity. I'm sure that he got a big boost of confidence, too, when Casey DeSmith left the game. And then you're seeing down at the other side, 
Pittsburgh's third goalie. You know, Jari's out, the Smith is out, and now you've got Louis Domingue in the net. And I, I'd imagine that Shesterkin just wanted to keep this thing going, and I think he did that, guys. I mean, he filled his role, Hank. He kept the game alive for as yeah, long as he could. He looked sharp the, the whole game, even when he gave up three in the second. Uh, we talked about this earlier as well. His strength of, of just stay um, in the right place mentally, not to overreact to it. And he looked very relaxed, even though Pittsburgh were coming at him really hard, a lot of different chances in the second period. And the key for a goalie, really, when, when you know you get scored on, is really to try to move on. And I think he showed that all year long how he's able to to come back and and, and come up with the next big save. Mm -hmm. He doesn't let any goals bother him. And you know he he kind of turned it around there, and, and and the Rangers scored the third goal and changed the momentum again in the game. Uh, but he is very strong mentally. He had an outstanding performance, first playoff game. So. I want to say congrats because it, it was such a performance by him and, and he should be proud the, the way he played. He'll need to use that mental strength because in about, what, 43 hours we have game two. How does a goalie who just experienced that possibly overcome it and be ready for Thursday night? Well, you know, the, the guys are used to play every, every other day. You just have to move on. Tomorrow, yeah, you, everybody's going to be tired. I th the question is, do they even go on the ice? Maybe they have a meeting, maybe do a light skate on Thursday, but you just have to yeah. move on. And you, you understand the importance of maybe get a little bit of feedback from this game. What can we do better? What do we need to improve to, to beat Pittsburgh on Thursday? It's going to be a big game for the Rangers, obviously, to not uh, fall in a big hole here. But Because yeah. um, the pressure's on them now, right? Because... Pittsburgh, all they wanted to accomplish was to come into New York and get a split, and they got that, and now you're really starting to feel the pressure already of the series building for you. You know, Again, this is Igor Shosturkin's first battle in the playoffs, and I'm sure that he feels a lot of responsibility to get the next game, which is Thursday. I mean, turn it over and get a win.